This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Ayer. Hello, great to be with you. Thanks for tuning in. And Bridget, we've been challenging people here for a little while (laughs) to jump on our Kroger bandwagon. Now, we don't want to tell you where to shop. You can shop wherever you want. But if you shop at Kroger, you no doubt use one of those red Kroger cards. Everybody who shops at Kroger does. That's how you get the best buys. But one thing you can do that would help us out a whole bunch is if you go to our website, catholicradioindy.org, and there's a Kroger logo uh, on the front page of the website there. If you click on that, you can choose Catholic Radio Indy. Be sure to use all three words, Catholic Radio Indy. Uh, You can choose us as your charity, and that's it. You never have to think about it again. Then every time you uh, buy a loaf of bread or a can of beans or a gallon of milk, whatever it is, Catholic Radio gets a small percentage. doesn't cost you anything, uh, but we really benefit a whole bunch. Now, the challenge that I've been throwing out we have 140 families. Wow, that's a bunch participating in it. But we know there's a bunch more people listening than that. There are. So we are challenging. We want to get to at least 150, boy, this week if we can. So we're at 150 people who are participating in this Kroger program. But I know we can make it 150, 160 probably this week. But all you need to do is to go to our website, Catholic Radio. Indy, I-N-D-Y, CatholicRadioIndy.org. Click on the Kroger logo and select Catholic Radio Indy as your charity. You never have to think about it again. You don't have to mention it at the store. You don't have to do anything at all ever. And uh, you'll be contributing every time you buy anything. So if you can help us out that way, we'd certainly appreciate it. Well, I'm really excited about today's show because family life is a real challenge in just in general, but it seems like it's getting more and more challenging. So I'm really excited about this ministry called the Messy Family Project, which um, I think is such a blessing and so timely um, for the times that we are living in. And our guest today is Alicia Hurden. She is one of the founders with her husband, Michael. Um, and we are going to be talking with her about the Messy Family Project and, and a new thing or a fairly new um ministry or a new program called Cana 90, which is a Lenten program. So welcome to Faith in Action, Alicia. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Really, I really appreciate it. Well, I, I really love, I mean, you have podcasts, you have so many great resources, you go out and speak. And I, I mean, it's, you know, Jim and I, we, we cover ministries. That's what we do, you know, for years and years and years. And, and yours really, really does stand out. And, and you got to love, you got to love the title <laughs> that, you know, most ministries give themselves some, you know, maybe a little pompous sounding <laughs> title yeah. so that they, uh, you know, sound official. Yeah. Uh, no, theirs is called The Messy Family. And as soon as you hear that, you think, oh, my family, I know that family. <laughs> well, how did how did you come up with that title? I mean, I've got to ask, and I'm sure you get yeah. that question all the time, but it's a great place to start. Do you know what is so funny? Is we get more comments on the name of our ministry than almost anything else. And I think, first of all, I have to say, is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, okay? Because Mike and I are not marketing geniuses. This was literally something we just, like, came with up came up with ourselves. But when we first started our, um, we first started a podcast, uh, gosh, like six years ago now, just as a hobby, just something our family members were like, oh, you should do this, you should do this. And we were like, who's going to listen? Like, wh- whatever. And it's not, you know, we didn't feel like it was a big deal. And I honestly don't remember how we thought of the word messy, but we started out calling it messy parenting. Um, <laughs> and so mess- so kind of like focusing on that parenting part. And, and I forget the conversation that happened. But then when we launched into our ministry, we realized that what we were doing is actually more than just parenting. You know, it's more than just parenting. It's about really the whole family. Because we had some grandparents listening to us and saying, hey, you know, I'm not a parent, but I still listen to you. But just so you know, that might put some people off. You know, like maybe what about aunts and uncles and, and marriage and so we were like, yeah, and so we had to change our names. And the one thing we knew about changing our names, we knew that we had to have the word messy in it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did take us a while. 
while. We went through lots of different, like, iterations and ideas and writing things down and asking friends and relatives. And, um, yep, and the Messy Family Project was born when we launched our ministry three years ago wow. now, I think. Wow. Three years ago. And yeah. you post a lot of uh, different podcasts and uh, different things like that. How do you come up with so many unique topics? I mean, you've got a lot of podcasts out there. <laughs> She's got a lot well, of experience. <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> it's, um, honestly, we have, well, we have 10 children of our own. And our oldest is 25. Our youngest is eight. Um, five, basically, it's like five and five right now. We have five who are adults. Uh, we have three grandchildren, actually, who are amazingly wonderful, as every grandparent will tell you. And then we have five children who are still in high school and elementary school. Honestly, from the very beginning, almost 75 to 90 percent of our topics come from things that we are dealing with in our home as a family or conversations we have with friends or relatives. And when we find ourselves just kind of getting hooked on something, you know, and it seems very relevant what people are dealing with, we think, you know, we should do a, you should do a podcast on that. So it's a very often heard phrase, we should do a podcast on this. <laughs> So it's really, so our podcast comes from our lived experience, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not experts. We're not counselors. We're not doctors. Mike says, Mike used to host um, Franciscan Presents on EWTN, so he always says he's not a theologian, but he plays one on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can relate so, to um, that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You just got to pretend. But anyway, but we really, what, what do we want to be to all of the people who are listening to us? We want to be an older brother or sister. We want to be somebody who is on the road with you, but, you know, we're just a little further ahead. We have some experience. We have some street cred. We've had some um, really throughout our marriage, we've always tried to be very thoughtful and intentional about the kind of family that we wanted to have. And God has blessed us by bringing amazing families and mentors into our lives. You know, like a lot of what we've learned has been through our own study, but also just through other parents who are farther than us, you know? And so we really just want to walk with parents and, and, um, and give them that mentorship. We have so many people need, so many people need that right now. We're talking with Alicia Hernan. She is one of the founders of the Messy Family Project Ministry, and it's a really a, it's a ministry to families. Um, I want to talk about why, um, why you brought this forward? I mean, why, what really prompted you from the Holy Spirit other than, okay, it was fun and it was a hobby, but then at some point you said, okay, God really wants us to do this. We probably need to like <laughs> get a web page, get serious about this. I mean, there's that, and we talk to a lot of people that have that same experience. They just think, oh, I'm just going to do this. And then, then like something really happens. Like, I mean, you probably have like 20, 30, 40, 100,000 followers on your on your platforms yeah. at this point, you know, and, and now you're like, wow, this is like something. So talk about that transition from hobby to now where God like wants us to do this. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is actually a great story. Um, I, I wish Mike was here because it was really God uh, knocking on his heart, but I can still tell from my experience as an outsider, Absolutely. I, an outsider, I guess, like we'll put that in quotes. But um, so, like I said, we were doing this as a hobby and before we knew it, after two, three years, we had up to 10,000 listeners. And this blew our minds because, like, I barely had time to do the podcast, yeah. you know, let alone market it or get the word out. And we were literally doing nothing. I don't even know if we had a Facebook page, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, so that, first of all, kind of made us sit up and take notice of, like, oh, oh, my, okay. We're obviously hitting a nerve here. We're, we're meeting a need that people have. Family ministry has always been on our hearts. First of all, I will say that. From the time we were engaged, actually, the first seven years of our marriage, we um, served on Catholic Engaged Encounter. We mm -hmm. were a teen couple for Catholic Engaged Encounter. And I think that that um, was such a beautiful way for us to start our marriage because we were working together and we were serving couples. And our heart was always there. Well, then we kind of went our separate ways, if you will, in the ministry sense. Mike was working at Franciscan University. I was serving in the homeschooling community. We were both leaders, like, in our own sphere. Well, then when this parenting, the parenting podcast idea came up, really from my brothers and sisters. So I am um, 
I have 10 children, but I'm also from a family of 10. Okay. So I have Re- Regina Doman is an author. She's my sister. You know, my brother Martin Doman is well-known in Catholic music circles. So I'm the second of that family. So my younger brothers and sisters who are raising their kids were always turning to us and looking for advice. So that's how we started the podcast, you know, like I said. But Mike really felt uh, the Holy Spirit first. I'll put it this way. <laughs> First, the Holy Spirit was just kind of knocking on his heart, right? And when he'd go to prayer, he would just feel like, yes, yes, Lord, you know, the Lord was speaking to him. Then knocking a little harder. Then the Holy Spirit's like pounding on his heart. You know, and I'm like, and in the evenings when Mike, because we'd always do the podcast at night. And, you know, after the kids went to bed and he'd be like, you really have to do this. I'd be like, please don't make me do it. I don't want to do the podcast, you know. But as soon as we started, I would just come alive. And mm-hmm. every time after it was after we were done recording, we always just felt that yes, yes, this is what God has us do. And there was such a deep peace. So we actually then um, made a, a business plan, which got into the hands of our Sunday Visitor Institute. Mm-hmm. And our Sunday Visitor was the first entity that came alongside us and said, "If you want to launch this as a full time ministry, we will give you the seed money to do it." Wow! And wow. that. Was such that was the Holy Spirit right there. Now so, you you so men- that's how it happened. <laughs> okay, you mentioned uh, podcasts and website and things. We we'll, we always give that at the very tail end of our program so people can do it. But let's just go ahead and give that right now. There, I'm sure there are people listening right now who think that sounds crazy. <laughs> sounds like something I want to I, I want to find out more about. <laughs> where, where, where do they go? What's the web very address? Very easy. MessyFamilyProject.org. MessyFamilyProject.org. All of our podcasts are on there. Resources, and we can be fa- wherever podcasts are found. Stitcher, iTunes. Actually, on iTunes, we're one of the top. If you if you just put in Catholic Parenting, we're the top podcast that comes up. And now I, I know it fluctuates a little bit, but we're always up there in the top uh, search results. Praise be to God. Well, it's not too early to start thinking about Lent. And uh, I was actually hoping that maybe we'd air the show um, later, like maybe in February, a little bit closer to Lent uh, as we talk about marriage and that. But I really were, um, it's going to be airing here like in the end of January. And really, that's the, gr- the best time to really start thinking about what we're going to do for Lent. Um, yes. Not just like the day before. It's like, ah, what am I going to do? Because then it's like, ah, I don't know what to do. And then <laughs> you're halfway through Lent and you're like, well, I've I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do. I mean, that's me. I'm so bad about it. So you just have to totally. really pray in advance. Like, okay, well, what is God calling us to do? <laughs> and so this new, um, it's, it's not new. I think you've had it out for about a year or so. The Cana 90, tell us what it is real quick. And then we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and get into some more detail on it. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Cana 90 is the 40 days of Lent and the 50 days of Easter combined. Mm. And it is a program for couples to decide on how that they how they can um, incorporate um, fasting, um, mercy, and almsgiving into their into their family life. Family life, being a mother or father, is your path to holiness. And so, instead of looking outside your family for how I can be holy, we really want couples. Cain and ninety. The point of it is to help couples look inside their family and say, how can I double down on my vocation? and really pursue holiness this Lent. And we give some ideas and structure and inspiration to do that. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to delve into a little bit more and how that works and what that looks like. So stay tuned for more Faith in Action. This station has been an inspiration. Those moments of the Lord, it always makes my day better. Catholic Radio Indy. Alexa, what's the weather forecast for today? Alexa, What time is the Colts game today? Alexa, remind me to pick up the dry cleaning tomorrow. Has Alexa become a part of your daily routine? Then make sure that routine includes Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Quick, easy access to Catholic programming 24-7. Just say, Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Air. Jim Ganley and I are sitting in the studio together, and we are talking with our guest, Alicia. About a messy family. 
Yeah, that's all of ours, right? right? <laughs> We're talking with Alicia Hernan. She is one of the founders of the Messy Family Project, and you can get more information at messyfamilyproject.org. So you don't have to wait till the end of this segment to get that. Um, we're going to talk about Cana 90, and we just talked a little bit about it before the break, but um, tell us, Alicia, about that. And I, I guess it's been going more than one year. I guess it's been going a couple years. So tell us all about it right. again. Okay, well, first of all, just kind of like going along with the theme of like messy family. Yeah. I just, I, I feel like I do want to tell you, when we first started this program, we literally thought of the idea of Cana 90 the Sunday before Ash Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Like we thought of the whole concept and we were like, ah, it's like last minute, should we just do it or not? And I said to Mike, I was like, if we don't do it now, we're not going to do it. Like, this is an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We need to, like, kind of strike where the iron's hot. Mm-hmm. And so, because what we were committing to were daily emails to, be, to send to people. And sure enough, and we didn't know if we would be able to handle that. And um, sure enough, God brought other people alongside us to help develop the program and write those emails and come up with ideas. And so it was really, it really was the Holy Spirit who came in and kind of spurred us forward to develop this program. So so what Canaan 90 is, like I was saying before the break, is a way of helping couples to double down on their vocation and their path to holiness. One of the principles, one of our tenets in our mission of the Messy Family Project is to help parents to realize that being a mother or father is their particular path to holiness. This is how God wants to create them. It's not like you have, oh, my job is here, my yoga class is here, my kids are here. No, no. You know, being a parent, being a husband or wife, this is the path of holiness that God has given you. And so when we make our Lenten commitments, shouldn't we have that in the forefront of our minds? Shouldn't we have in the forefront of our minds, how can I be a better wife? How can I be a better father to my children? And so if I'm making, when you, I'm thinking about, a, you know, mom or dad who has three little kids at home, is it a good use, is what God is calling them to to have an hour of adoration a day, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, I would have loved to do that, right? Or is God saying, I want you to take an hour a day and sit on the floor and play with your toddler? Mm-hmm. What, what is God calling them to? Because it's a particular call. We are not religious. That is, we are not consecrated, you know, set aside. We are living in the world. Our children need us. And not only that, but our children need us. But then in return, our children make us holy. <laughs> our children make us into saints. And this could be what God is calling a young family to do. And we actually were just talking to um, young parents the other day. So beautiful. So beautiful. They each were committed to their own personal prayer time. And they were getting frustrated in praying with their three-year-olds and their two-year-olds and their six-month-olds. And I just, we just could tell them, look. If you are praying in front of the nativity set and somebody starts throwing those nativity figures, just be like, okay, we're done. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Let's go play outside. <laughs> and, and that's okay. Like, it's really okay. And that's part of the messiness, right, of family life. We're not all holy card families. I don't have the kind of kids that could sit all during Mass and just, like, fold their hands and eat. I just, we didn't have, we have very extroverted, active children. But that doesn't mean we don't bring them to church. That doesn't mean that we don't try to pray together. It just looks different than maybe other families or maybe, maybe even my family now. My youngest is eight. Mm -hmm. You know, my life is very different than when I had five kids under eight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, it, it sounds like what you're really describing is the kind of vocation of parenting or the vocation of marriage. Most people you know, think of religious vocation, priest, nun, uh, that sort of thing, deacon. Uh, but parenting and uh, family are vocations. Exactly, exactly. And so at the beginning of Canaan 90, we give some examples of the type of um, dying to self that parents can do and kind of help guide them in discerning what should their Lenten commitments be that will um, shore up and strengthen their vocation and encourage them to do that discernment with their spouse. That is key because, you know, sometimes, especially uh, 
some very zealous you know, young men, you know, those young dads, like, God bless them. They want to do the hard things, you know, they want to, they want to go and just really lay down their lives and all of that. And it's good for their wife to say, okay, honey, I, let's pull back a little bit, you know, let's just send this together. And we, that's what marriage is for, you know, as we can help each other. Okay, what are the good commitments? What do our family need? What does our marriage need? Because, again, you know, maybe a better sacrifice would be, hey, we're going to take a half an hour to connect every night um, after the kids go to bed, and we're going to leave the house in that. That's a sacrifice for some parents, mm-hmm. you know. And for some parents, it's we're going to work together to clean the house. It's, you know, I'm not telling people what to do, but just to realize that that discernment has to happen for what you are in your state in life, that phase in your family, where you are right now, that season of life that you're in. But that discernment, your spouse is one of the best um, people. It's the, you're really your best counselor, um, you know, for a good Catholic couple to decide what, how should we become holier this Lent. So anyway, to so kind of guide couples through that process of discernment for their Lenten commitment before, between Ash Wednesday and the first Sunday of Lent, and then you have a victory tracking sheet. So you can keep track of your commitments. How are you doing? Just so you can see it on that paper. And then um, daily emails that will guide you through the scriptures and give encouragement and some focus. And every Friday, you get family, um, family activities for the weekend of ways that, okay, now, hey, let's incorporate your kids into how can you celebrate Lent with your children. So, Because, of course, children are such an important part of family life and holiness and all of that. So there's the daily emails and then every Friday ideas for things to do for the weekend. So then is there a, so how do people sign up and is there mm-hmm. a cost? And then I'm wondering, it's, I know then some of your other, um, I've used some of your other resources. I know you have some downloads too, yep. downloadable mm-hmm. things yeah. to kind of do you have, so is there a download for the discernment part to kind of go through like a Q and a, or is there just something to read? I, and yes, yeah, yeah. So we have, um, if you just go to our website, messyfamilyproject.org, right there front and center we'll have our Canaan 90 um, sign up. It is free to sign up, absolutely. Um, uh, everything on our website is free. Uh, that's a commitment that we've made as a nonprofit ministry. I don't even want $5 to hold some young mom or dad back from doing this. So, um, so you can sign up for the daily emails. There would be a download for the discernment part, but then the daily emails um, after that. If you prefer to not have a daily email, we do have a book. We took all, so last year, we took all of the emails and everything, and we printed them all up, bound them together in a book. We're actually going to be reprinting it next year. (laughs) So we have too many irons in the fire right now. We couldn't reprint it this year. But we have books, um, and if you go to the website, there is a place that you can request a book, too. It's a minimal cost. I think it's $10 or something like that. And you get a bound book with um, the sheets and all of the emails if you prefer to get off the screen for a while, which yeah. I know that I like to do. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. And I'm really glad that you offered that because, yeah, sometimes and then you go to your email to, to get your scripture reading and then you're doing something yep. else and you go down the exactly. you know rabbit hole and you, know, and you never oh, get yes. to the prayer part. So I love that you have a paper edition. So that's really awesome. We only have a couple minutes left. I'd really love to get some feedback um, from, you know, the, the previous years you've done that. If you've gotten any feedback from um, how it's either impacted you or other people that you've talked to in doing this and how it kind of helped them to, to mm-hmm. have a better Lent or to maybe even just plan a better Lent. Any, any thoughts on that or any stories that pop into your mind, either personally well, or for people that have done it that had a mm-hmm. good impact? Yeah. Uh, the first thing actually that comes to my mind is this past year, obviously with the pandemic mm-hmm. and churches being shut down, um, in the Holy Week portion of Canaan 90, at the end of the 40 days, we have a number of ideas of how to celebrate the Triduum with your children, which we have used before this pandemic. Like we would use this our whole lives, you know, where we would do things with our children in addition to attending services, you know, at our church. And so when the pandemic hit, it was so perfect because we were like perfectly poised to, hey, these are, we'll just give you, here's the things that we've done at home and then just kind of incorporate the readings and things like that um, in people's homes. So, I think that what we have heard the most comments is on that portion of Canaan 90, is the celebrating the Triduum at home. Because even when we, you know, back when we had a bunch of little children, 
sometimes it just wasn't always, it was a very, um, it wasn't a good idea for us to bring our five little kids to church. It was like a near occasion of sin for us, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we had to figure, here's the ways that we can celebrate at home. We've had couples send us beautiful pictures of them doing processions with their children, them, dad, washing all the kids' feet, um, you know, a mom who are, you know, putting before them a little, uh, you know, scene of the, um, the resurrection and the crucifixion and talking with their children. It's so beautiful. And when we get those pictures from listeners and see them living the domestic church in their home, it's just it's all worth it, you know. It's just a, it's such a beautiful witness to us. So I think for me that has been that has been the one thing that has really blessed me is when we get those um, pictures and comments from people about really how doing doing this program and then really celebrating Easter together has been a blessing to them. I'm guessing that it's also somewhat solidified your marriage and and your own faith life. Can you talk about that just for just a minute or so? You know, <laughs> when you're producing God, content, you know, it's <laughs> yes, you got to yes. have something to give, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you know, God, our God is so amazing and he is personal. And he when I think about how he is always looking at that 50,000 foot view. And if he is calling me to something that is blessing other people. It has to be something that is blessing me and my marriage and my children because there is nothing that is more important to me than first my relationship with God, my husband, my children. And if what we are doing, if this ministry isn't helping us to double down on our vocation, mm-hmm. it's not worth it. It is not worth it. But I, have, I can tell you, Mike and I have grown so much in our marriage and in our our own thoughtfulness and our intentionality. And we have seen our children who have really helped us and encouraged us. And our kids' friends, that's the funniest thing, is when we have teenagers or college students come to us and say, yeah, we're listening to your podcast. (laughs) You're kind of shocked, but that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, right. Alicia, we're out of time. Give us the website one more time. MessyFamilyProject.org. All right, we're going to be looking there to sign up for Cana 90. And um, thank you so much, Alicia Hernan, founder of the Messy Family Project. Um, Thanks for being our guest today. God bless you. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.